So, I just sort of pop in and saw Shiro at the uh, Atlantis Backpackers, another one of my long-term clients. Uh, gone through the whole COVID situation. Um, Shira is just delightful. I've, I've only good things to say about Shira. Um, her husband, hi, Paul, Phil, sorry, sorry, Phil. Uh, he's actually one of the people that manages one of the MIQ sites. He's with the Air Force. Uh, also, a very um, he, he's a he's a man of great great ethics, and you know he's he's an Air Force man, you know, uh, and an interior. They were you know, lovely, lovely couple. And I said, you know, what, what do you feel about the series? He's like, oh, the, oh, these people are, you know, these people are dingbats. And uh, we get, we get a bit talking about further. And she tells me about the letter that she's actually written to the Picks and Times. And the gist of it is that she doesn't actually have a problem with any of these people here individually. Uh, and, you know, she also understands the complications about the, the role of things like Donald Trump in terms of how he actually compromised the response. And she agreed that the element of profiteering within the uh, pharmaceutical companies, again, had actually hindered the uh, whole vaccine uh, response. But at the same time, uh, you know, she was saying, well, you know, she, she is a person that believes that this is a disease that's serious, and she talks about the need. And basically, her arguments of uh, very, I mean, <laughs> let me put it this way, where when we turned around and finished, I said, oh, you know, I'm calling my story the good, the bad, and the complicated, and she gave me one of Shira's famous hugs, uh, meaningful, and, that, you know, she she really appreciated that I was trying to get in there and actually give her perspective from, from all angles, and she's not a fan of the protest people, but it isn't against, her feeling is it's not against individuals that her main issue is, it's this issue of, uh, well, twofold, one is the um, concept of when you get, you know, get so that many people, it's a mob response, which she feels can actually kind of hinder and hold back things. She seems to have an, an idea that these people aren't willing to really negotiate. Uh, I don't know how, I didn't really get a chance to actually ask her whether that's from the media perspective or her own, you know, discernment of information. She's a, she is a person that's got great insight and she doesn't actually easily go running around um, having other people make her mind up for and you know whatever her partner's role in the situation is that doesn't necessarily affect the way that she looks at things because that's the kind of person that she is um, so yeah so overall spoken to five people there as I walked into town just first people I actually met two obviously we you know when Peter lived from Lashone he believes that yes they should have a right to protest he doesn't have a problem with them Sure does. She doesn't have a problem with individuals, um, and you know she's. This is a very tolerant person. You know she's had people from motorcycle gangs stay at her backpackers and defended their right to be able to not be harassed by the, the police. So <laughs> she's a she's a genuine, real New York liberal. And um, we've had the house mum who lives around. It's a little bit inconvenience, but she's not had that big a problem. She's relatively neutral. We spoke to the. Very passionate Jacinda Ardern voter who just absolutely wanted to see these people in a negative light. And then we've spoken to another local resident and mum who was actually believes they have some points, but hasn't been overly impressed with uh, some of their contact. And again, I think when I look at my interpretation of it, yes, I think there have been some dingbacks at the camp, and the camp will actually have to own that. But I think there's also been some components where it's not actually been what they think it is, nor not been carried out by the people at the camp, uh, or even some of the things that seem on the surface to be antagonistic are actually not, instead of in the sense of local gangs actually turning around and doing a little bit of a screech there to tell other gangs, like, no, we don't want to get part of this drama, we want to stay clear, leave it alone. Uh, so, basically, <laughs> my conclusion of my little highly, highly unscientific uh, walk around was that the response of people in Picton is probably about as diverse as the people actually at the protests. And they actually have, if you sat them all in a room, a lot in common with each other. And I imagine if you took the politics out of the equation, there really wouldn't be a great deal of an animosity. Uh, obviously there's some people that just don't get on because that's the way the world, we don't, we don't can't be friends with everybody. But 
overall it's just Kiwis uh, and in a very strange and, and, and tiring time with having to deal with so many I mean the other aspect is just turn around share a green I mean, is that there's a, the component of the people involved in the camp which are um, you know, there are different fractions and she acknowledges that it's completely complicated. And she also acknowledges that the government's response and the, the global government corporate response is complicated. And, you know, she recognises, she said she loved the fact that my, my story was the good, the bad and the complex. So, there you are. That's my bean and Picton. How it all come around, how, come and have a look for myself. I've had a short talk, been in the camp for 24 hours. Uh, see my perspective it there um, and you know, to, to me the protest in some ways is very much like going to a gathering festival like there was a, a really wide range of people there that all have all sorts of really interesting belief systems and some people guess what being human beings are dingbats and are pretty you know some people could do with reading a book. That's that's the reality. Some some people have got ideas which they have picked because they believe existing belief systems. But in saying that, there's also people there at that camp that are very successful in life, both in terms of personal relationships and, and, and what are their achievements in life. Uh, they're intelligent people. They're able to discern complicated data and information. They all have a wide range of uh, why they don't want to why they're opposed to the mandates. Um, as I said, you know, I've spoken to people who are actually in my boat. I mean, you know, my feeling is towards this is that I've spent 20 years working towards a business and I've just watched in a year my client basis get wiped out and I'm going to have to largely build that all over again and I'm not even sure I'm going to be able to. It's had a huge impact on my own personal life. Um, I've had people who, like I said, it's a story about the grandfather. Uh, basically, that grandfather you know, last days on this planet were ones are very, very lonely ones and it probably shortened his life quite considerably. I've listened to people who have been involved in that are politically passionate about politics. And yes, there may be issues about the mandates, but I also seen that there's much, much bigger issues. And as I said, I actually find once I get past the people that actually see this in terms of black and white Oddly enough, when I come across people, they understand that this is a much more complicated, not a goodies and baddies image. It's often our, our mainstream media paints these narrative where there has to be a good guy, a bad guy, a winner and a loser. Uh, and for when I talk to people, people realise it's a bit more than that. I find it a little bit sad, actually, because I find these people... Uh, these people actually have a lot more in common with each other. And if, if you could actually, as, as normally is the source of most conflicts, if you could actually just get the people to sit down at the table uh, and see each other, not for their politics or what their belief systems are, but actually as, as people, that there will be probably, this wouldn't have to be such a painful process. But anyway, that's my being in my experience uh, of Picton. Um, I said I'm going to be going on the boat tomorrow, uh, crossing over, going to Wellington. I'm going to spend about three or four days in Wellington, try and get the same perspective here as well. Uh, you know, that first-hand boots-on-ground kind of aspect of it. And uh, I'll try and give you a report, which doesn't try and paint everybody's goodies or baddies or, you know, try and actually point the fingers. You know, well, the only person actually I can't help myself, I just can't stand corporate governments. That's my weakness, my bias. But otherwise, I'm going to be trying to give you the good, the bad, and the complicated.